as one of the founding members of uh, Stop the War Coalition, John Rees, and he's going to lead on civil liberties and where we've got to over the last 20 years. Thank you, John. Yes, Murad's absolutely right. Uh, at the founding moment of the Stop the War Coalition, uh, we realised, um, I think everybody in the room realised, that um, an inevitable consequence of the drive to war would be a racist backlash specifically directed at the Muslim community and a renewed attack on civil liberties. Because if you are going to take a country unwillingly to war, if you're going to take a country to war where the majority of the population disagrees with that war, actively disagrees with that war, then you are going to have to silence their voices and try and prevent them from protesting effectively on the streets. And that was exactly, is exactly, what's happened uh, since the war on terror a renewed assault on the Muslim community, the birth of Islamophobia on a society-wide scale, and a renewed attack on civil liberties. Now, I want to talk about one particular uh, case of uh, uh, civil uh, liberties, and that's the case of Julian Assange. Because... Because if there is one voice more than any other who brought forth the truth about the war in Afghanistan and the occupation of Iraq, brought it forth on a globally important scale, it was the work that Julian Assange did through WikiLeaks. I was there at the first press conference in the Frontline Club when those war logs were released. It was a bombshell. Not because we did not know what was going on, but because it had not been proved in such unrelenting detail as it was through those WikiLeaks releases. Now, we know what's happened to Julian Assange uh, since. He has been persecuted by the United States, imprisoned by the British government, and silenced as a critic of war and of corporate misgovernance. Now, I think that in this movement, we have to learn something from the American Marines and from the Army Rangers of the United States, because they have a slogan, which is, we never leave a fallen comrade on the battlefield. Well, we are not going to leave Julian Assange imprisoned in Belmarsh. It was, in fact, in this very hall and on this very stage that the Stop the War Coalition held one of the first of the rallies to support Julian Assange when he was forced into the Ecuadorian embassy. It was here that Jen Robinson, his lawyer, together with Tony Benn, Tarek Ali, Lindsay German, spoke up at the very first attempt to silence Julian Assange. And we won't stop, we haven't stopped, we're not going to stop now. It will be two years, two years, think about this, two years next week that Julian Assange will have spent in Belmarsh prison on remand. I'll tell you what on remand means, it means innocent. It means not charged and not convicted of any crime. Now, there is a principle, and it's a long-standing and valuable principle in British law. It's called habeas corpus. It means that you cannot hold a body in prison without bringing them before a court and charging them of a crime, and if you can't do that, you should let them go. There is virtually... There is virtually no prisoner virtually no prisoner in the British prison system that's been held without charge or trial for two years. 
And I say now to Priti Patel and the rest of them, let this man go. What you are doing is illegal. What you're doing is immoral. What you're doing is inhuman. And he must be set free. Now, Julian Assange has actually won one trial. The decision of the Westminster Magistrates Court at the very beginning of this year was that he would be a suicide risk if he were sent into the American prison system. He would be at risk of his life if he were sent to a supermax jail in the United States. That should have been the end of it. When that judge handed down that judgment, he should have walked out of the prison in Belmarsh. When I told Davis, da David Davis, the Tory MP, of that result, he said, well, why on earth isn't he free and walking the streets? It's a damn good question, and the British government and the American government don't have a damn good answer to it. So from everything we've learned about building the Stop the War Coalition, from everything we've learned about public campaigning, I urge you to follow Peter Brearley's advice. He had it exactly right in the last session about what the Stop the War Coalition does. It brings people together and organizes them so that they can do things and achieve things that they could never hope to do separately. We don't have wealth. We don't have power. We aren't a great corporation. We aren't a government uh, machine. But we are collectively far stronger than we are individually, and we can enable things to be done and for people to achieve things that they could never do separately. I've said it many times. I'll say it again here. Every great mass movement is a mosaic of small acts. So before you leave today, go over to the stall there, pick up the leaflets for the demonstrations that are coming up outside the Court of Appeal where the United States are hoping to overturn the decision of the Westminster Court and drag Julian Assange to the United States to put him on trial for espionage when what he was really doing was journalism. Let's be clear, <laughs> journalism. So go over to the store. If it's the only thing you do in the next week, pick up the leaflet for the national demonstration on Saturday the 27th of October. Pick up the leaflet for the demonstration outside the court on the 27th of October. And even if you only take a few, take them to your family, to your friends, to the people in your workplace or your church or your mosque and give them to them and say, come on. If only two of us go, it will be better than one of us going. If you can do more than that and get a resolution adopted in your organization or your trade union, if you can bring a coach load, good. If you can bring two coach loads, better. But bring yourself, bring a friend, bring somebody from your family or your work or your trade union or your church or your mosque because this is how the great and the powerful are prevented from holding down the poor and the weak. This is how information gets out rather than information being suppressed. This is how the truth is heard rather than lies circulating the globe. It's up to you. It's up to us. Take this into your own hands and make sure that the United States government don't keep this man in jail because he is one of us, one of ours, and we need him out and free. Thank you, John. Well, thank, thank you.